Hello folks and welcome to a DAISY Tools tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the image to .paa converter. What is a image to .paa converter? Well, the tool allows you to convert PNGs, GGs, and other image file formats into a PAA. What is a PAA? PAA is a image format that is universal to the DAISY game engine and is used on various things such as models, surfaces, the skybox, and many, many more things. And is the key cornerstone to all images inside of DAISY itself. Full disclosure folks, I do not know everything about DAISY modding, and if I do get things wrong or I do mess up inside of this tutorial, please let me know in the comments below so we can all learn. Now let's go ahead and look at how we can launch these tools. Okay folks, let's go ahead and launch the image to .paa converter. First we're going to have to go to our Steam to launch DAISY tools, which we can go to Steam, go to your library, click on Home. Once you are in there, make sure you click on the games and tools and then go down and make sure that the tools is selected if you do not see your DAISY tools right away. Then click on your DAISY tools, go overhead and go to launch. Make sure that the play DAISY tools option is selected. Click play. And then if you have admin mode, just go ahead and click yes for launching this and voila, we have our DAISY tools. Let's go ahead and minus the steam. Now we can have our DAISY tools open. Let's go ahead and launch the image.pa, which can be found under utilities and is on the left hand side, the second from the top. Click on the image.paa. Let's go ahead and center this. Let's go ahead and put the DAISY tools behind it so it's not on our way. And let's go ahead and go over all the options that we have here. Okay, folks, first up we have our add a source directory. When you click on that, it'll bring up a browser. And then when you select the folder, it will pull any of the image files from there that will allow you to convert to a PAA from there. Then you would just click OK and you could cancel and it would populate on this left hand side. I'll show you that here in a second. Next up, we have our scan subdirectories. It will literally scan all of the subdirectories from the main source directory that you selected. Next up, we have our options and destination of directory. This allows you to tell it where to send the PAA files and once it has converted them from the image file format that you have chosen. Right here we have use custom as an option. This means that if I do not have this checkbox, it will automatically put the PAA files into my add a source directory that I had chosen. If I do click the use custom, I can then click on this folder and I can click on a folder if I, oh, I want to use or a place I wish to put the PAAs to go to. However, if I wanted to, I could technically just copy and paste a file path that I wanted to go to here without having to use the folder system. System. Override existing files allows you to overwrite the existing .paas inside of a folder. This it goes exactly off of the file names, so if the file names differ a little bit or anything else, it will not overwrite the existing files. They have to be named exactly the same for it to overwrite them. Okay folks, then we have our strict naming chart. I do not know what the strict naming chart does, but my guess is that if you have a PNG file called example underscore co.png, it would convert that 100% into a color.paa and nothing else. Then we have our check image list. When you click on this, it verifies that all of the images on the left hand side are actually valid and still do exist. Then down below we have our exclude JPEG. We can exclude our PNGs or we can exclude our TGAs. This means that when I go to add a source directory, if I have the exclude JPEG, it will ignore all the JPEGs and only populate PNGs and TGAs. This can be very helpful because let's say I only wanted to load the PNGs, I can make sure that all the JPEGs and TGAs that I had worked on previously that I consider to be inferior edits would not be pulled and only the final edits being a PNG format were pulled. However, you could technically um, make it so it's only TGA instead of PNG thus far. Reset list allows you to just reset the image list which clears the entire image list and then down below here we have three options. Okay, folks, the first button we have here is a chapel with an eye on that. If we go ahead and click on that, it brings up a texture naming conventions window. Inside here, you can see all the different types of naming conventions you can use for your PA files, and it explains what those different naming conventions do. It would be good to note that the image.pa tool does not automatically convert to these naming conventions, but rather it allows you to see what you can do with this inside of the text viewer, which I have a tutorial on in the right hand corner if you wish to click on that. Let's go ahead and click close on here and let's go ahead and click on the chat bubble with the question mark when you click on this it takes you to the bohemian interactive wiki the official wiki and it does a simple explanation of the tool however i have inside of the wiki found a thing where it breaks down stuff and explains the full tool further on and i will be leaving that down in the description for you to take a look at let's go ahead and close that window now we have over here our little third button which is grayed out and it looks like a console command window you really can't do anything with this because i've never seen it not turn gray if anybody knows anything about this let me know but i've never actually seen this actually pop up next up we have our process file buttons which if we had files on the left hand side under our name 
name, we could see that this button would become highlighted if we had the things checkboxed. And then below that, we have the queue is empty. This tells us that the process files is not processing and there is nothing to be queued. Next up, we have our nothing to do in a green checkbox, which is pretty much just verifies that there is nothing happening at that time. So let's go ahead and add a source directory and see how this tool actually works. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and click on add a source directory. Now, I've already have a predetermined source directory. We're going to be selecting the metal ring. Now, on the left hand side here, you can see that it's populated with the metal ring co, no HQ, SMDI, and then wrong underscore co. On the left hand side here, you can see the name, you can see the type, PNG, and then you can see the file path, and you finally can see the size. Now, as we can see here, we have all this selected and we're ready to convert it to PNG. However, let's go ahead and make sure that we have all the ones we wish to select ready. So a check marks means that it's selected. And if we wish to, we can uncheck box it so it does not become a PAA. Now, if we wish to, we can actually click on one, push shift, and then click on another to select all of them above or below the one we selected. Then you can click that check box and it will automatically deselect all the ones we have selected. If you wish to, you can push control, select the one you want, select another one. And when you click the check box, it will automatically deselect it, unselect that one. It will not do that one for unselected ones, however. So that is the basics of that. Now on the right hand side, we can see we have our destination directory. We talked about this before. If you do not use a custom directory, it will convert the PNGs into a PAA and will put the PAAs immediately in the folder of the source directory that you had chosen from the PNGs. So for this example, we're not going to go ahead and use a custom. However, we wish to, we can either click the use custom and paste our own file path, or we can click on the folder and navigate to a folder we want. However, this example, we're not going to be using custom and we're just going to convert the PNGs into PAAs and put them inside of there. When the conversion happens, it will not delete your PNGs, but it will place the PAAs next to them. So let's go ahead and go down here and click process files so we can see it happen. It's going to double check that you wish to place the PAAs inside of the source directory as a precautionary measure. So if you do convert your PNGs to PAAs, you always know where they're going to go. If you accidentally click this um, yes on this, and you don't know where your PAAs are. Just check if you have used custom checked or not. And if you don't, then it's obviously going to be where you put the original PNGs and that's where your PAAs are going to be. So let's go ahead and click yes on this. Then you're going to wait for it to process. Now you can see the right hand window of all the selections went away and you can see that things are turning green as things are processing. Now down below in the bottom here, you can see that we have a bunch of stuff. Populate, and you can see there it goes searching for files to add. It added four files, that's when we added the source directory. And then it goes processing, it goes one megabyte, tells you when it did, it tells you the amount of seconds it took to do it, and then it repeats that all the way there. Then it tells you if it has successfully converted everything, but it also tells you if it failed to process something. And it says to fail to process the metal key ring underscore wrong underscore code. Why did all of these successfully convert to a PAA, but this did not? Well, I can tell you exactly why that happened. And it's because that there are certain requirements that every PNG, TGA, or JPEG have to meet to be able to be converted by the image to .paa tool. So the image to .paa is kind of picky about what kind of JPEGs, PNGs, and TGAs it can convert. It, these requirements are not super hard to meet, but they are requirements you have to be aware of. So for the image to .paa to convert a PNG or any other image file format to a PAA, it has to be 8-bit and not 16, 8-bit, and its dimensions have to be dividable by two. Now this can be a square, a rectangle, lengthwise or heightwise, but it still needs to be divi dividable by two. Once you have met these requirements, you can convert pretty much everything. However, in this example, as you can see, I have three green textures, which means those three textures were fully converted to PAAs, but I have a red one. The red one means it was not converted. If I go up to them and I right click on it, I can go show details. And you can see here that the image is a X2048 by Y2048. And that's the dimensions of the image. But if I click on show details, it will show here and it says the image size appears to be valid. But what is wrong with this image? The size is dividable by two. The image seems to be valid, but yet I can't figure out why this image cannot be converted by my PNG. Well, folks, it's due to how I made the image itself. If you are using GIMP and you export a PNG and choose the RGBA option, make sure that it has a eight in front of it instead of a 16. If you are using Photoshop, make sure that you are forcing it to use only 8-bit when exporting your PNG files, I or TGA or JPEG. I have found that TGA does not have an option for this, 
So as far as I know, it automatically only does 8-bit for TGA. However, folks, I'm very uncomfortable and don't know a whole lot about how textures and images overall are handled outside of DayZ. So please let me know if I am wrong in this uh, department. So again, folks, just going over the requirements again, it has to be for PNGs, it has to be 8-bit, and it has to be dividable by the power of 2. Otherwise, past that, you are totally fine and your images will convert. And folks, while this has been a really fun time, I've really enjoyed our time, this is the end of the image to .pa converter. I really appreciate everyone coming here and watching the video, and I hope you keep showing your guys the support. And once again, thank you for being a viewer and subscriber, and I hope you folks look forward to the next modding tutorial that I have.